great form. You guys sounded like a bunch of owls. Woo! That's right. This is Owen, and Owen is a beautiful five-year-old male or boy great horned owl. They of course got their name for the feather tufts that stick up on top of their head, and that's all they are. They're simply feathers. They're not ears and they're not horns. His ears, believe it or not, are located at the edge of his facial disc. Same as where our ears are located. And uh, believe it or not, if you're a great horned owl, you have something called asymmetrical hearing. And what that means is, is one ear's up here and the other ear's down here. And that is perfect for sound locating your prey. Yeah. Now, us humans, we have symmetrical hearing. Our ears line up, not the great horned owl. Now, believe it or not, that asymmetrical hearing is very, very important because what it does is, it helps them to sound locate their prey so they actually use that uh, when they're hunting. Now, you guys are thinking, holy smokes, how do they use their ears for hunting? Believe it or not, they use the shape of their face to capture their prey. What? They use their face to capture their prey? That's really weird. I'm going to show you guys how it works. Are you ready? All you have to do is participate in an unscientific experiment, but don't worry, it doesn't hurt and it's really cool. The shape of his face is called a facial disc. So the shape of his face is helping him hunt. Here we go. This is how it works. All you guys have to do is take both your hands and shape them in the shape of a cup. Kind of like you're going to scoop water. Ready? Take your cupped hands, put them behind your ears, and you're done. You guys will notice that my voice just got a lot louder. You just created your own facial disc, just like what Owen the Great Horned Owl has naturally. My voice is caught in your hand. The sound's amplified. And the sound, of course, goes right into your ear. That gives this bird one of the best senses of hearing on the planet. It also allows him to use his sense of hearing when he's hunting. Now, have a look at the size of his eyes. Do you see how huge they are? If you look close, they're the same size as my eyes, or your eyes. But if you look close, you'll notice how much larger my skull is. I've got this big head, regular size eyeballs. He has these huge eyeballs and a really puny skull. Skull. Believe it or not, there's not too much room in that skull for anything more than those really big eyeballs. There's no extra room, believe it or not, for anything but a really small bird brain and those big eyeballs. There's no room even for the eye muscles that us humans have that allow us to stand in one spot. I can look at you guys over there. I can look at you guys over there. I can look at you guys. I can look up and down. I can even cross my eyes. A great horned owl cannot do that. Their eyes are so large, there's no room in that skull for any of those eye muscles. So their eyes are what's called fixed in their sockets. So a great horned owl can always only stare straight ahead. If he wants to look to the right, he has to move his head to do it. If he wants to look to the left, he has to move his head. If he wants to look up or down, anywhere he wants to look, he's got to move his head because his eyeballs are stuck, always looking straight ahead. You guys might be thinking, oh man. He's got a tiny brain, he can't move his eyeballs around, that's terrible. Don't worry, Mother Nature figured it all out. To make up for that, they do have amazing neck mobility. But no, they cannot spin their head all the way around like Chucky. They can, however, turn their head, are you ready? All the way around to the other shoulder. That's pretty cool. Myself as a human, on a good day anyways, I can make it to one shoulder. The Great Horned Owl can continue all the way around and look at you guys over there. Isn't that crazy? What sort of prey species or what sort of dinner, lunch, and breakfast is he catching in the Ottawa area? Well, he's a fantastic predator. Believe it or not, the Great Horned Owl can capture all sorts of different creatures, including, are you ready? Canada geese, possums, raccoons, porcupines, plenty of mice as well. Now you guys think Owen is kind of cute? He's pretty cute, isn't he? There's a reason for that. On every single feather on his body, every single feather on his body, he's got a little hooker barb. If you look close, it looks like the teeth of a coat. Can you see that? Okay. Every single feather on his body has that, that, that little fringe, okay? It looks like the teeth of a comb, makes him look cute and fluffy looking, but that's not the reason. What it does is, it actually serves a purpose. It gives him totally silent flight. So when he flies at night in total darkness, he flies in total 
silence. Isn't that awesome? So it's a bird with a wingspan of about three and a half feet. So imagine having the stealth to be able to sneak up on your prey. Absolutely fantastic. So not a noise does this bird make. Absolutely cool. Now, remember Ontario's earliest nesting bird? Very, very important to you, especially in the Ottawa area. You guys know all about February winters, especially this past one. Well, if you look close, you can see how very well designed this bird is because it's fully covered in feathers from the tips of those feather tufts all the way down to those very long, sharp talons. So you can see it is a bird that is very, very well designed for a cold Ottawa winter. Believe it or not, if you take all the feathers on the great horned owl's body and you put them over here and all the bones over here on a scale, his feathers weigh more than his bones. Wasn't that crazy? The beautiful great horned owl, the Wall Ontario's earliest nesting bird, found right here in the Ottawa area. Okay. Now, I'm not being rude showing you his backside. I actually want you to check out his tail. Most specifically, the color of it. Because this awesome hawk is named after the color of his tail. Any guess what kind of hawk is this? I like to call this bird the highway bird because I always see it when I drive along the highways. Um, actually, not just even in southern Ontario, right across our magnificent country. Any clue what kind of bird we're talking about here, guys? Yep. It's a hawk, and it's named for the color of his tail. So it's, how about a brick red? Very good guess. It looks sort of brown, but how about a brick red color? Sort of? Yeah, so this is called the red-tailed hawk. So this is the common species that is found if you do any driving at all. Perched on lampposts, perched on fence posts when you're driving along the highway. If you're a farmer, you know this bird. This is the bird that's uh, out uh, when you're out disking or out haying that is standing there very, very patiently waiting for ground dragon prey to run by. This is an awesome species of bird. Um, and uh, I just got to figure out where it over here. It is a very cool medium-sized hawk. To recognize it in the wild, all you have to do is look for a medium-sized hawk with a creamy white chest, a brown speckled necklace, looking like they're wearing a pair of pants. And if they are over the age of one, they get beautiful brick red colored yeah, you guys, he's where he is now. If you guys check him out, you will notice, first of all, they're very calm. Well, he's very, he's very, very calm. He's pulling his foot up like he's going to go to sleep. They are very, very calm, patient hunters. So typically what they do is they perch on top of a lamppost or a fence post, and they stand there patiently waiting all day for ground running prey to run by. So, that's awesome. That means I know he's getting ready to go. He'll check all you guys out when he feels comfortable. Off he will come to me. So, that's a good sign. This is a sprinter in the world of birds of prey. So they're really fast and really maneuverable over a short distance. Mother Nature's designed them really well. They have short paddle-like wings and a nice long tail. So those short paddle-like wings allow them to go really fast over a short distance. And that long tail acts like a rudder, just like on a boat, very appropriate for today, to steer and maneuver them. They also use that to put on the brakes. You'll notice when he lands on my glove, he'll fan out his tail. That's how he slows himself down. Um, the older the red-tailed hawk gets, the darker their eyes become. Sadie here, believe it or not, is 17 years old. So he is a nice older bird. Come on there, big boy. And you can see Calm Patient Hunter, they do not miss a thing. They have amazing eyesight. They check out absolutely everything. It's probably looking at that main cow up there going, what? Come here, there, buddy. Please make sure you have a chance to check out this awesome species because they are very plentiful.
difficulty found all over this area. Um, in the world of birds of prey, it's really, really difficult to tell the difference between the boys and the girls. This is what a male or a boy red tail hawk looks like. This is what a girl red tail hawk looks like. They look exactly the same. There is no way to tell the difference at all, unless you're a vet, because everything's internal, so you can't peek. Um, totally different from our songbirds, of course, where the males are much more brilliantly colored, so they can attract themselves to the female. In the world of birds of prey, for the most part, the girls look exactly the same as the boys. There's no way to tell. So, how do I know that this is the boy? I guess I could wait to see if he laid an egg or not. Uh, there is a way you can tell, actually. For the most part, believe it or not, listen up, ladies, because in the world of birds of prey, the girls are bigger than the boys. That's how you tell the difference. And it's not by a little, it's by a lot. This fella here, and I know he's got a girl's name, yes, we did call him Sadie, because um, uh, he didn't grow anymore. There's only one, uh, one uh, chick, just him, in his uh, clutch of eggs that hatched. So, um, he weighs in, believe it or not. Maybe I should ask you guys, do you think you can guess how much he weighs? Ballpark idea, I'm gonna give you a hint, lots of others. 50 or 15? 50, what do you think? Eight? What do you think? How much do you think he weighs? Nine? Anyone else? How much? Yeah. Pound and a half? What do you think? He's a boy with a girl's name. Huh. We tried to change his name back to a boy's name, but we were, we were calling him Sadie for two years. And now it's been 17 years worth of calling him Sadie, so I just can't, so I gotta explain it every single time. I try to call him Sid and other S names, but there I am standing out there calling Sadie, and then I'm like, what? So I gotta explain it. Yep, Sadie. Sadie the male retail hawk. Believe it or not, he weighs in at just under a pound and a half. A T specific 651 grams this morning. We, we weigh our birds every single day. Now, a female is about three pounds, so quite significantly larger. But an awesome species found right here in the Ottawa area. Very cool. Guys, or maybe some of you guys might be thinking, oh my gosh, it's a vulture. Because it looks like a vulture, doesn't it? This is a beautiful barn owl, believe it or not. Oh, a big stretch. He's stretching and growing so fast. Yep, he's stretching. Okay, just stay where you are, you guys, okay? Now, the barn owl, believe it or not, has the best sense of hearing existing on our planet. Stretch the other side as well. Now if you look at him closely, oh, and you'll probably go to the bathroom. Next. If you look closely, you can see that very, very well-pronounced facial disc. And again, that's the shape of his face, just like the great horned owl. But this fella has a very, very well-pronounced facial disc, and that's what gives him one of the best senses of hearing existing on the planet. Again, asymmetrical hearing, so he can pinpoint or sound locate, right? When he moves his head back and forth, he's catching all the different noises and sounds. You can see his feathers are just coming out of the shaft. It looks like a straw, and the feathers unfurl from there. Um, last week, he was half the size, and he was fully covered in white fluffy down. So you can see the feathers are just starting to grow out of the shaft. Same with on his face as well. But absolutely adorable. Again, the barn owl used to be found in southern Ontario. Southern Ontario was the northern fringe of their range, but unfortunately they disappeared due to a loss of habitat. These guys are grassland hunters, and unfortunately we only have about 7% of our original grasslands remaining in the province of Ontario. I know he's so cute! Um, on the planet, barn owls are very widely distributed. They are one of only three birds worldwide called cosmopolitan. And that means they are found on every continent except for the Antarctic. So again, he's not dancing, he's listening to you guys, all the different noises. Are you ready for this? I got an awesome fact for you guys. This is tested by us humans. The barn owl, tested by us humans. On a totally moonless night, it is of course nocturnal, so a nighttime hunter. On a totally moonless night, 
the barn owl, believe it or not, it can pinpoint a mouse that is running 25 meters away from itself. So that's about the length of a, it is the length of a regular size swimming pool, about from here to the bicycles over there, okay? So 25 meters away from itself, the barn owl can pinpoint a mouse running 25 meters away, total dark length, darkness, it can fly over there, capture that mouse with 99% accuracy. Just wait. Yep. That mouse can be under 10 centimeters of snow or leaf litter. So it doesn't even have to see the mouse. Isn't that crazy? So it's hunting by its hearing alone. Yes, it can see very, very well, but its sense of hearing is absolutely fantastic. Another reason it's moving its head around, it has to judge distance. Remember, he can't go like this. His eyeballs are fixed in their sockets. So he's got that amazing sense of hearing, but he's got to judge distance, how far away things are, and depth perception, and also sound. Okay, before he cracks on the stage, I'm gonna move up. One more stretch. And look at those long, needle-sharp talons. He's almost full-grown, but he needs weeks and weeks of feather growth. Uh, the growth rate's absolutely fantastic. Um, I do have two more birds left, but uh, as a quick A-side, if uh, any of you guys are on Facebook, if you check out our company, we always uh, post baby pictures. We have some baby bald eagles and all sorts of different babies. So check us out on Facebook and you can track the growth. Okay, little fella. Okay. This is the beautiful American, sorry, Kestrel. American because it's distributed through the Americas. Kestrel, which means small falcon. And you can see little peep is definitely qualifying in the small falcon department. Now, the American Kestrel is formerly known as the Sparrow Hawk. And not because he looks like a sparrow. Now, this little fella is found in the country, it's found in the city, and sometimes it will visit your own backyard bird feeders but not for the seeds you're putting in. Your backyard bird feeder for the American Kestrel is kind of like a fly through Tim Hortons. They're coming to visit your backyard bird feeder to capture and eat the birds coming to your backyard bird feeder for the seeds you put out. Okay, and I forgot, uh, I forgot to take off. He has a special little tail saver to protect his tail. And um, he needs that for flying. And just to keep his tail, all our birds have to have perfect feathers. So they can imagine if a bird doesn't have feathers or has any bent feathers, it's going to affect their flying. So that protects him in transport. Um, so this beautiful falcon, believe it or not, can capture other birds in flight up to the size of a starling. Amazing little flyers. They also eat dragonflies, moths, and plenty of mice. If you look close, totally different from the first bird we had out. They have, um, sorry, I'm just gonna maneuver over here. They have uh, long pointed wing feathers and that nice long tail. If you look close, they have black mustache markings coming down the side of their face. Do you see those black mustache markings? There's a special name for that. They are called Mallor Stripes. All falcons have Mallor Stripes or black mustache markings, and they're very, very important because they act like a pair of sunglasses. You guys might be thinking, what? How do those black marks act like a pair of sunglasses? That's crazy. Well, believe it or not, us humans have taken those black stripes, pair of sunglasses from the falcon family, and used them for our own game. Have you guys ever caught a professional baseball game or a football game before, or even watched them on TV? I'm sure you've noticed on a hot, sunny day, the athletes keep black mustache markings underneath their eyes. Because of course, it's too dangerous to uh, wear a pair of sunglasses on the football field. Of course, those are Mallor stripes taken from the Falcon family so that the athlete can see that much farther. Um, for those of you guys who are looking at the American Castro, and perhaps you're thinking, oh man, he looks so cute. Shawnee, you said that they're found right here in the Ottawa area, in the country, in the city, and sometimes at my own backyard bird feeder, but I've never seen one before. Well, I bet most of you guys have, but perhaps you are mistaking them for another. Well, there we go. My technical, uh... Otherwise... 
Yeah, yeah. There we go. No? Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. All good. I think you're stuck like that, Doug. Nope. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Um, for those of you guys who are thinking, I've never seen one before, even though you said they're found all over this area. Well, I bet most of you guys have. But perhaps you're dismissing the American kestrel for another bird. Please put up your hand if you guys have ever seen a morning dove on a telephone line before. Right, we all have, right? Now, next time you see one morning dove sitting all by itself, look a little bit closer. The dead giveaway is actually the tail, because the tail of an American kestrel swings back and forth and forth and back, just like the pendulum on a clock. And that's how you know you have the smallest falcon in North America, the beautiful American kestrel found right here in this area. Very cool. Okay, buddy. Okay, one bird left, guys. Okay. So I'm sure most of you guys uh, realize uh, that this is a magnificent bald eagle. This is Rocco, and Rocco is an eight-year-old male bald eagle. His wingspan from wingtip to wingtip is six feet, and uh, he weighs in at a whopping eight pounds. Now remember, uh, in the world of birds of prey, the females are larger than their male counterparts. So a male bald eagle is about 8 pounds. A female, believe it or not, can weigh upwards of 16 pounds and have a wingspan of almost 7 feet. If you check him out, you'll notice he has very long talons and very knobby and gnarly toes. Kind of like an oak branch. Perfect for grasping hold of a very, very slippery, scaly fish. If you look at his beak, you'll notice it's long and sharp. It doesn't even really match his head, does it? It's very, very long and pronounced. He looks like a cartoon character. Again, perfect for tearing into a very tough, scaly fish body. Now, bald eagles capture and eat lots and lots and lots and lots of fish and other waterfowl, pond Canada geese, and ducks and the like. Believe it or not, they are also pirates. So they will happily steal a fish from that awesome fish catching hawk found right here in this area, the beautiful osprey. And some of us might remember the osprey from the back of our purple Canadian $10 bill. Remember that cool bird catching the trout? Yeah. Uh, also, believe it or not, bald eagles are scavengers. They will happily wait all day for a dead fish to roll ashore and they will feast on that. Um, I'm from down by Lake Erie, uh, down near Port Dover, and there was a deer hit on our road and uh, there was a bald eagle feasting on the carcass, believe it or not, in March. Um, again, so scavengers as well. Uh, now because birds of prey, like us, they sit at the top of their food chain. So they act like a barometer by measuring the health of the food chain below them. So if anything starts happening to any birds of prey, and in recent years it's been of course the bald eagle, I'm sure you guys have all heard about the peregrine falcon, but I think it's our responsibility to examine any problems under a microscope as soon as they happen and hopefully fix it as soon as we can. Because if we don't, I think it will directly affect our human populations, um, our cities, our towns, our own neighborhoods and families if we don't. Now hopefully you guys have learned a little bit about birds of prey. I sure hope that you take this knowledge home and protect and conserve them uh, in nature and in their own backyard. I've impressed upon you that these awesome birds are not just found in the pages of a book or on the internet or on TV. They're actually found right here in Ottawa in your own backyard. You just have to look up. Um, thank you so much, uh, everybody. Uh, if you would like to see Rocco up close and personal, I'm going to have him on the stage, but of course I ask you to please stay off the stage, but I'll happily uh, answer any questions if I can, and you can have a chance to see him or take pictures. Um, otherwise, I believe Little John will be on stage at 1 o'clock, but there's some really cool events going on, of course, all day at the Dragon Boat Festival and right here in the Children's Tent. Thanks you guys so much for coming and enjoy the rest of your day here at the Dragon Boat Festival. Thank you.